This morning I'm doing another plastic surgeon website teardown. And in this case, it's Dr. Christian Subio. What does this website get right? What do I think they might be able to improve? And most of all, what can you take away from this? Let's get into it. My name is Frank, I'm the founder of Saga Pixel. If you like this video, you check out the playlist that I've linked in the description over to our general plastic surgery marketing playlist, as well as the rest of the videos in this plastic surgery web design series. So in section number one, I'm going to talk about the general aesthetics and UX of the website. And then section number two is gonna get into the messaging and the formatting of everything that the website's actually saying. All right, so the mobile layout, everything works, it looks good. Uh, great photography. I like the striking contrast that he has. At the bottom, there's a tap to call, there's a tap for appointments. It's doing a lot of the stuff that it needs to do. Whether you're on desktop or you're, or you're on mobile, the website has great photography, it looks good. I don't think anybody's looking at this website and coming away with a, a negative impression of this practice at all. It's elegant and I think this supports the brand. I do have two design bones to pick though. Number one, black call to action buttons on a dark background, definite no-no. It makes it really easy to miss these buttons and frankly, these are the things that we want people clicking on. We need them to stand out. I noticed the same thing in the footer, the schedule a consultation button is in this black button on the dark background. This is a definite mistake. But honestly, anyone that's been doing marketing for more than five minutes knows that what you say on the website is more important than what it actually looks like. You can have the most terribly hideous website in the world that converts like a monster if it's communicating the right message. So let's talk about that. And by the way, there are some SEO implications to everything that I'm about to get into. So there is a formula that we need to follow when we're building out a landing page. The very first section, the hero section, needs to grab your attention. It needs to tell you that you're in the right place and it needs to give you a call to action. Then we wanna get into establishing some sort of social proof. There's a lot of different ways that you can do that for a plastic surgeon. Let's see how Dr. Subio's website does it. After that, we wanna get into telling the story in more detail. This usually means telling the visitor what procedures you do, like what your offerings are. Next, we wanna get into overcoming objections, having a call to action and finally having some sort of alternative sales pitch. How does Dr. Subio's website handle all of this? All right, the hero section actually says something about the practice. It's not just plastic surgeon Philadelphia. You do want to have your keywords in your H1 tag, but equally important, you want to actually say something about the practice. In this case, the website failed to include the target keyword in the H1 tag, which it, it should have. It probably would have been better to have that H1 marked up with plastic surgeon surgeon Philadelphia or plastic surgeon Philadelphia and then have the become art live beautifully wrapped in uh, a span or a P tag from an SEO standpoint that would have been better from a messaging standpoint however this become art live beautifully it works next we want to get into how we're going to establish social proof and here we have uh, different publications where he's been named the top doc, place where, places where he's been called out before. B basically, these are awards and uh, accolades that he's received. This works, though I personally have a preference for calling out the before and afters. Which, by the way, I missed the call to action in the previous section. Let's go back to that. I mean, it was easy to miss because again, we have a black button on a dark background that's calling you to go check out the before and after versus schedule your consultation. I think that actually works. Honestly, it's very uncommon that someone's just gonna land on your website and wanna convert right away. So having them go over to the before and afters, I think makes sense. Next, we wanna see how we're telling the story in more detail. This usually means that you wanna either get into telling the, the visitor about the plastic surgeon or you wanna talk about all of the procedures that he or she performs and specializes in. In this case, they went into the route of talking about uh, Dr. Subio. I think this works. Then you scroll down and they're talking a little bit more about him and I think this is starting to get into an area of arguably being overkill. All right, I'm scrolling down a little bit more and we're getting into a little bit more social proof. And honestly, I'm, I'm a couple scrolls down and I still don't know what he does. If I wanna get a rhinoplasty, is this what he does? We go down the page. Okay, we're getting into reviews. This is social proof. Okay, like what, what does this practice do though? And then I finally get to it several scrolls down. All right, m breast and body. I I'm not in love with the presentation here because I have a suspicion that this practice does more than this. Uh, if we click on the menu, body, breast, oh, they do, okay, and neck, 
lipo, face type, PRP, they do lasers. Okay, so th there are a lot more things that this practice does than breast and body. I've never spoken with them about what it is they, they wanna focus on. So it very well may be that this is all that they care about and this makes sense. If indeed they do care about all these other offerings, the lasers and whatnot, then I think that this section, this layout is probably falling short in that respect. How are they handling objections and what are they doing as far as like an alternative sales pitch? I don't know if this is necessarily overcoming objections. It's really just repeating what it said before. And then we, ha then we have calls to the other sections. So I'm I'm not sure that this is actually doing what I would recommend. Now, it also happens that Dr. Subio has a very strong social media presence. It would have made a lot of sense to call this out and try to get people to see some of the content that they have. For one, it'll help them to get to know the practice a little bit more. And two, if they're not ready for a consult right now, it'll give some opportunity for them to say top of mind over time. And when they are ready, have Dr. Subio first on that list.